So welcome, uh, Mark Sanchez. Uh, we'll give a talk on the trisodic uh, equation <coughs> and the uh, Trello Right. Um, well, first of all, thank you, Alexei, for organizing this session and inviting me to give a talk. Um, so, I think it was convenient that I am giving almost the last talk, because then I don't have to introduce a bunch of things. So people have been talking about it. So I'm more or less going to assume a few things. Um, okay, but well what is the idea of the talk? Okay, I mean, we have se several talks about you know these Picard SEO extensions, parameterized Picard, Picard SEO extensions. Um, you know, they study linear differential equations, and a lot of the times it's about you know constructing algorithms and all these things. This this is not like that. So what I'm focusing on is okay. First of all, try to, you know, when do we actually have a nice Galois theory? By that I mean, in which settings do we have a nice extension, such that the automorphism group has some topological properties that we can understand somehow. Okay. And then, understand if this extension came as solutions to some equations, which is going to be like logarithmic equations. Okay. And then try to understand, you know, first of all, uh, first of all, what I mentioned about finding uh, equations for the extensions, and second, the Galois groups are are all differential uh, groups, the Galois group of something. So this is a general question, right? Everybody worries about groups being Galois groups. Um, okay. okay. So this is exactly what I said. Uh, first, a nice setting where we have all of these nice Galois theory, nice Galois groups. Um, understand when the, these nice extensions, they actually come from some differential equations. They are solutions to some differential equations. And finally, understand, you know, how can we determine if a differential algebraic group is the goal? It's a general question, which I'm, I, I'm not, I'm not going to answer. Right? But I'm going to give partial answers to this and, and motivate this. Okay, but I mean, in order to do that, I, I don't want to introduce too many things. I don't want to. I'll try to do the minimum possible. And what, the one thing that I will need to do is this notion of bounding the differential type. And then, okay, these, these nice extensions I was talking about, they are, they are, they, this is strongly normal, generalized strongly normal. People have probably seen you know, coaches strongly normal or some other notions of strongly normal extensions. I want to talk about the generalized ones. Uh, and then we want to talk about parameterized groups and the logarithmic equations on these groups. Uh, then I'll give a couple of, of nonlinear examples. Some Gala groups. Okay, so I want to fix the notation. Uh, because we have parameterized Gala theory, you want to partition your derivations into two sets, right? Some people use delta for some of them, for pi. <coughs> I want to call pi the full set of derivations, right? And uh, I'm going to be working inside a uh, universal differential field. Well, people have seen this before. It's just, it's more or less what James was doing around here, where I'm just going to fix some differential field, and everything I talk about is going to live inside there. All my, my differential varieties, differential break groups, are going to be sitting inside this differential field. Okay, so I'm going to think, think of differential varieties as sets. Okay, so this is kind of a, uh, a base style differential algebra geometry, right? Okay, and I'm going to fix some differential subfield. And I'm going to use this notation for the constant. Some people use C, C is okay, but I'm going to use the capital. It's more convenient. And my partition, I want to call my partition delta uh, cal D, where, where these are going to be my parameters. These are my parameters. And these are my actual, my equations are going to be, are going to involve these ones, the Kali. Okay, so that's why I, I really need my Kali to be not empty. Okay, the, the delta, as usual, it might be empty, so maybe you don't have any parameters. You got it, okay? Sure. Okay, now, okay, bounding, this bounding business. Okay. In other talks, people have been talking about these dimension polynomials, right? Which they, they measure how, how fast the transcendence degree of a differential field extension grows, right? And okay, and they also mentioned these two invariants out of these dimensional polynomials, the degree 
and the leading coefficient. So two basic invariants. I'm interested in the degree. Now, why am I interested in the degree of the dimension polynomial? I mean, it's, it's a number, nice, but it has a very important property, which I, I use a lot. <coughs> suppose you have 10 derivations, right? You have 10 derivations. And then suppose the degree is 5. And it's like, okay, but what does this have to do with the 10 and the 5? Well, it turns out that up to some uh, modifications of the derivations, you can get rid of 5 of them, essentially. Okay? What I'm saying is that, okay, you have 10 derivations, and I have some tuple, and I take the differential field of that generated by that tuple. I need to use the 10 derivations to generate it, right? All the derivations. I take A, and then the delta 1A, delta 2A, the 10 derivations, and I generate that field, and I take all, all the higher order things, right? But if the differential type is 5, the degree is 5, sorry, is 5, then you essentially only need 5 of those derivations to generate this field. This is the main property I, I'm going to use. So it's essentially what I'm saying here. Suppose that, um, OK, we say that the delta bounds the differential type of a tuple if essentially I only need delta to generate the whole <coughs> differential field. Maybe I, need, maybe I need to extend the delay to some A prime. But this is, this is going to be this is a finite tuple, and this is another finite tuple. And I only need delta to generate all the differential field. So this is what I'm, whenever I say delta bounds the differential type, this is exactly what I mean. So that, that just says that the tuple A has a uh, differential type uh, fewer than, than M. Or That's whatever. Right. That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this, this is why I, I call it bounding, because it's exactly the, this number, which is uh, this number is the degree of dimension polynomial, right. is actually bounded by the cardinality of my delta. Yeah. And this is no, this is no. This is even no if? Okay. By, uh, okay, so this is not really a bounding because you have to, you, can, you should, we, okay, this is actually what I'm going to say right now. And this coach improved that we can always find, again, as I said, we might need to maybe transform the derivations. That's yes. what I mean by this. Maybe you have your derivations, maybe you need to put some integral coefficients. You change them a little bit, not too much, such that this delta prime will bound the delta type and it will be equal. equal. Right. So that's more or less equal. Okay? So this happens. This happens. So, but notice this. I'm only saying this about a single a tuple. I have a tuple, and I talk about delta type of a tuple, and I talk about uh, you know delta bound the differential type of the tuple. So I'm not going to have to pay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Great. I won't have to. Uh, right. Okay. So this was about tuples, right? But what if I take a differential variety? So again, remember, differential variety for me is just I'm taking some different system of differential equations, and I look at the solutions in some differential field. That's all I'm thinking about. Now, I'm going to say that this delta bounds the differential type of the differential variety if it bounds the differential <coughs> type of each element in the variety. So you have to go through all the variety, all the points in the, which of course, there, there might be a bunch, or maybe finite, right? Uh, but there might be like a bunch of elements in this variety because I'm working in this differential field. Um, but I need to find a single delta which bounds all of those points. Is, is X uh, irreducible? No, you don't, you don't need to assume it's irreducible. It's just a differential variety. Again, it, it, it is a bound, as I said before. But now you don't have the same converse, right? The, the, the other converse, remember, was something I'm going to go back one slide kind of having this, 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 this converse, which you can actually sort of witness it, you can sort of witness the differential type. Well, this might not happen for every single point, because you, you, you can do it for every point. I, I pick a point, and I find the delta prime, as before. But, but I need the same delta prime for all. If you compose x into its components, then you take generic zero. The problem happens. The problem happens in the zero sets of the initials and separates. That's where the problem happens. So generically, you can do it. Generically, you can do it. Like if I pick a generic point and I choose the delta prime, that's going to work for a whole open set, for a whole open set. 
but it's going to be some small a sub variety which is going to involve the set branch where I, I might have some problems. Now, I should say, I should say, it's not known. That's what I should say. <laughs> I should say that it's not known. I don't know if, I can, <coughs> if one can do this. Yes? Is it possible to co accomplish the bit after example, by, do it, by taking a reducible x so that you need one family for one component, a different family, I mean, one delta for one component, a different delta for the other component? Mm -hmm. And somehow to put them all together is too much. Well, that that was the idea originally, but the examples that I come up with, for example, there's one is example with a constants and constants. Let's say uh -huh. two iterations. I take yeah. delta one constant. If you take delta one plus delta two, which is a new derivation, because mm -hmm. remember I'm allowed to yeah. make some combinations. Yeah, yeah. That one witnesses the union of the two. So once you take combinations, you can witness. Uh -huh. See what, what? No, I don't understand. Okay, take the delta one constants. Yes. Union the delta two constants. Okay. Right. Now take the take delta two prime. I'm replacing them, right? Yeah, yeah, with a sum. With a sum, and then the other one is gonna be. You can just take delta one, I think. You can just take delta one, right? And then in that case, delta one, delta two. Witnesses, right? Delta one, delta two witnesses the differential type of both of them. I need to think about this. <coughs> I need to think about this. What can we do? Oh, okay. This is a, this is the delta one constant. Um, I think you can take the delta one point to be any of them, and I want to put this uh, any point in here, right? So. Say that same? No, I don't think so. It's not. Not for all A. Wait, it's A, it's A, A is not well, okay. Maybe I'm doing wrong. 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 Maybe no, but no, but I should be talking here, I should be taking my gift. Yeah. Yeah, some, some, as James but, is some universal. But in your equation, something like delta 1a is on the oh, left. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. Is, that, is this correct now? So I'm taking all the points which are in the union yes. of these two sets. <coughs> so this, for every point in the constants of you, delta 1 constant, delta 2 constant, this is going to happen. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. So, delta. Delta two primes uh, uh, bounds bounds the the pi type of my set x. Which now this is this is this is my set x. So yeah, because you're allowed to take these combinations, it's not completely obvious how to build a counterexample. But I don't know if there's one. I, I, don't know. I don't know. But but luckily, this is, we're very lucky about this, is that differential algebraic groups are Great. You can do it from, from differential algebraic. If I give you a differential algebraic group, and the thing is, it separates initial business. They don't really, they are no problem with groups. <laughs> exactly. Not only are all the components have the same dimension. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can play with this. Uh, you can move the, the witness into every point because you have this group structure. Um, so for groups, you can you can find this delta prime, which bounds the differential type, and it's actually equal. Remember the delta prime before, and it's balanced and it's equal. So now I can I can put a g here. So these properties of bounding and witnessing, I mean, now I know. So now we know that for a group, I can find if the if the group has differential type two, 
two, right? I can find a subset of derivations of two derivations, which this happens. So, I can, so basically what I'm saying, you can forget about all the other ones. You have a hundred, differential type is two, forget about all the other ones. Well, I mean, don't forget about them, but you can control them in terms of, the, of just the two. For every point in a differential algebraic group. Okay. Uh, okay, so now what is this nice setting that I'm talking about? Uh, if people have seen before strongly normal extension in the sense of coaching, this is going to make a lot of sense. So what is it? Even if you have seen, you know, in the algebraic setting, you have seen what a normal, you know, this just algebraic algebra theory in characteristic zero. Uh, I forgot. This is all characteristic zero. Uh, and that extension is a final extension which is normal. If you have seen this before, this is going to make perfect sense. So what is a, what is a general <coughs> normal extension? Well, for people who have seen a strongly normal, you should think of this x here <coughs> as a constant. You should think of you know, the constants of k equals the constants. Okay, here there's some technicality here, but the constants of that. The constants do not change. Well, by the way, here's x. x is any differential variety. x is any differential variety. But in the case this is a constant, this is just generalized from normal extensions, and this is a normality condition. This is a normality condition. Any, any isomorphism from L into my differential, universal differential field, uh, it takes L into this set. Again, this is just strongly normal. And people have seen this before, this makes perfect sense. Just think of X as being the constant point. Okay. What does L output this mean? Oh, sorry. L is this means you take a differential closure of L. Ah, L sorry, 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 yes, sorry, yeah. L diff just means take a differential closure of that. Any differential closure. Okay. Okay. And so as I said, this, 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 suppose my, my differential variety is finite, then you actually get, you know, Gallo theory from <coughs> under bracket. This is a finite extension which is normal. If this is a constant, you get Colchin's coaching is strongly normal. If maybe this is not x is not all the constants, but it's some, some constants, then you get parameterized strongly normal extensions. This is general setup. Okay, what are some properties of this? I'm not going to spend time on these properties, but you know, you know, you can, you can say a few things. Suppose, suppose you knew that delta bounds the type of the differential variety. They also bounce the type of L. So you can transfer information from the variety X into the extension. That's, that's all this is saying. That's all this is saying. You can transfer information. But this is, this is where the, this is where the Gala theory comes into play. Well, consider the group of differential. By differential, I mean the whole thing. Just like in Picard, parameterized Picard is here. You consider all the, all the automorphisms in, which are differential with respect to all the derivations. All the derivations. The this differential automorphism is spelled L over K, there is a differential algebraic group such that the automorphism group is isomorphic to the K points of this, of this differential algebraic group. This, this, this happens when you really want this to happen. You have some control on the on the on the, on, 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 these, on the subgroups of here by understanding some differential algebraic subgroups. Um, and again, you can transfer information from the extension to the group, like bounding. You can transfer the bounding business from the extension to the group. You can transfer this information from one to the other, and you got you have the usual data correspondence between intermediate fields and the and the differential algebraic subgroups. And now one property is that these Galois groups they are never of differential type maximal. This is the number of derivations, by the way. So the differential type, at most, is the number of derivations, at most. But the Gala group is always less. Always. Always. Okay, now, I want to talk about, what I want to get at is, can we understand these nice extensions, these strongly normal extensions, as solutions to differential equations? Can we understand them as solutions to differential equations? So that's what I want to get at. So I'm just going to do very quickly, you know, how is, how is the Picardesio theory? It's motivation. The Picardesi, the parameters Picardesio theory, you know, you take a partition, it's like <coughs> a partition, I'm, I'm calling like this my second set of derivations, and you consider as usual linear systems. Yeah, it's a linear system. 
And of course, you need the matrices to satisfy some sort of integrability conditions. You want you want derivations to commute. You really want this integrability. Okay, then now parameters the Carmesio extension. Um, it's exactly what you would expect, you know. You know, non-new constants and generated by a fundamental system. It's the usual definition of parameters currency, okay? So non-new constants and generated by a fundamental system of solutions. Now one can one can write this in the setting of logarithmic equations. This is a standard. Right? I'm just gonna, just gonna do it if people have not seen it before. You can write you can rewrite this system in terms of logarithmic equations. How do you do it? Um, okay. So a group of our general linear matrices um, it is a differential algebraic group and it is defined over the constants. Okay? I mean this is true. Of course more, more is true, but, but what I have there is true. Uh, and so okay, you have a differential tangent bundle and you have a section, which is just I take my matrix and I map it to M and then full of zeros. It's full of zeros. And that, that is a section of the tangent bundle. Section of tangent one. But luckily, I have another section, which is I apply my derivations to my matrices. I apply, I apply uh, my D1M, D, DRM. And I have this other map, which is also a section of a tangent bond. Well, maybe you know, this fiber was probably okay. the tangent bond. And, and the nice thing is again. What, what, sorry, what is R? What is R? Oh, remember that <coughs> in the previous slide, sorry. My uh, my oh, set of equations is, is the number of equations. Uh, the nice thing about this is that you can combine these two sections, and you can consider the product. I take the first section and multiply it by the inverse of the second section. All of this is living in the tangent bond, and the nice thing is that this product lives in the Lie algebra, and you can compute. You can actually say, okay, this is. It turns out just to be this. You know, this product. Section times section inverse is this, which is what everybody calls the logarithmic derivative. It is, this is the logarithmic derivative in the case of linear algebraic groups. Right? <coughs> Derivation m over 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 m. Okay, this is a standard. This is, this is nothing new about this. Okay, so now of course now we can rewrite the system. Now we can rewrite the system that we had before just in terms of the logarithmic uh, derivative x equals some matrix x. And so now a Picardius extension is simply non-new constants and L is generated by a solution of the logarithmic equation. And this rewrite is rewriting the system of equations in terms of logarithmic derivatives. Okay. Don't, don't worry about that. Don't worry about the last time. Okay, and now of course, I mean the, the, the original question was if I have a nice extension, does it come from differential equations? And of course, if the extension was a Picard seal, then I'm cheating because it comes from equations by definition, right? But how about the other one? How about if I give you a general, a strongly normal extension? Well, well, we need to use these parameterized D groups, which is going to be very natural. So just keep in mind, keep in mind, I'm going to go back a little bit, keep in mind that you have these sections. You have this section, this section, and you construct, you construct logarithmic equations. By taking this differential, this, you know, these derivations, times this section inverse. Just keep in mind that. Keep that in mind. Uh, okay. You keep that in mind, and you replace the general linear group and the zero section by an arbitrary G and an arbitrary section, then you go more or less to the same thing. Now, I should say that if G is defined, if this G right here is defined over these constants, Everything works out. Everything is exactly the same. There's nothing. Really well, there's a couple of things that are new. But the point is that, oh, this, sorry, this should be this equals. This g equals. The point is that if I take g and the derivations, they still live inside the tangent model. That, that, that's where I use this, the final group constants. So this still has the tangent model. But if my group is not the final group of this constant, then this is not, this is not true. Not true. Okay, and then we we'll, we we'll, we'll replace tangent bundle for for the prolongation. I mean, people have been using this word. I hope I mean the same thing. But you replace it for the prolongation. Um, so the point is that for each partition, for each partition, there is a covariant <coughs> counter, which is the prolongation, such that you have a prolongation. 
the formation, right? And this is a section. That's all I'm going to say about it. So you have to understand your model for the prolongation. And so what is a parameterized group? It's, as I said, it's a pair of a delta algebraic group and a section. And a section, a section into the prolongation. And it has to be integrable, but okay, I won't, I won't, I won't discuss why you need this condition, but you need integral. This is this for me is, is, is the most important part. This 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 thing right here. And actually no, okay, this is important, but no, this is this is more important. This is the one that I care about. Every differential algebraic group. Oh sorry, I, I, before, before I can tell you this, I need to tell you what this is. So take take such a group, GS, take such a group GS. If you think about it, this is exactly what James more or less what James talked about. Uh, you're talking about the points in the group such that the derivations are equal to this section. Okay, the way James put it is when the derivations were living inside his W. That was in James' talk. Derivations inside of W. But now here my W is represented by this by this section, the image of this section, but when this coincide, when these are equal. I should say that in, in the case of the constants in the zero sections, like before, with the GL, the GL section, they're just the constants. These points are just literally the constants. But this might be different. Okay. This is what I care about. Every differential algebraic group looks like this. I can just if I have a differential algebraic group and I want to understand it, I can literally, it's gonna be literally, it's gonna be isomorphic as a differential algebraic group, something of this one. So we can just simply study these groups. Okay, and uh, just like before, differential times section inverse gives me logarithmic maps. So I have logarithmic equations. And so, and so now I can do exactly the same. Uh, a Galois extension of a logarithmic equation, non your constants, non -your constants, and I'm generated by a solution of the logarithmic equation. This is for me. This is going to be. Uh, a parameterized Galois extension, or a Galois extension of a parameterized logarithmic equation. Okay. All of these guys, all of these, all of these extensions of logarithmic equations are indeed strongly normal. <coughs> they are strongly normalized. So, so it's a very nice Galois here. Very nice. All the properties I mentioned before, these these guys they satisfy. Okay, and then we can have particular cases. As I said, as I said before, if you study the theory. When the when the group is when the group is this and section is this, we get parameters of Cartesian. And when we study we study the theory when the group is defined over the constants and we take a zero section, this is being done by Kochi, Kubashi, and Lattice. Okay. So for me, the important part is things are, are arbitrary; they don't have to be defined over the constants. And so this is one of the first things that I ask: if I give you one of these nice extensions, is it actually generated by solutions to logarithmic equations? And I don't know in general, but under this assumption, <coughs> so suppose the delta delta bounds the differential type, and this is delta closed. The, the base field, the base field is this is, a, this, this is a strong assumption, so it's not it's not really great. Strong assumption. Then it's true. Every strong normal extension, as I said before, is generated by a solution to a logarithmic equation. This is a strong assumption. Strong assumption. This is, this is not great, but okay. Now, how about the other part? How about the other part? So this was one question. The question was, this extension being solutions to logarithmic equations. How about, how about groups? How about groups? Uh, if I give you a group, if I give you a differential group, is it the Galois group? Well, it is gonna be the Galois group. It is gonna be the Galois group of, of a generalized strongly normal. That's, that's a fact. If you take a differential algebraic group, it's gonna be the Galois group of a strongly normal extension. Of, of, of generalized strongly strong normal. It's gonna be. It is a Galois group. But now, is it the Galois group of a logarithmic equation? That's, that's a different question, right? So, and here I give you some conditions. For example, suppose that uh, you, you can find differential closed field, uh, which 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 the group has a generic point. Then then it's true. If I start with a group, satisfying this condition, then, then it's true. That group is going to be the Galois group for logarithmic equation. But this might okay, this condition satisfied in some cases. So, so for example, this condition where you can find a generic point of the group over this differential closed field, it's true for algebraic groups and it's true for groups defined over the constants. 
So if I give you a group which is uh, the break, you know, then it's going to be the Galois group. Then, then the G sharp, the G sharp is going to be the Galois group, or some equation. And if the if the if the group is defined over these constants, then the G sharp is again going to be the Galois group by this kind of equation. Okay. I don't think I have time to talk about these examples. Maybe I'll just show you the equation. Consider this group. This is a this is yeah, this is a differential algebraic group. Some, some equations. Differential algebraic group. Well, it is. It is the Galois group of this. Oh sorry, what what did I what did I have? Oh here, sorry. <coughs> it is the Galois group of this. This is, this, this, this is a logarithmic differential equation. And in fact, in this case, you can compute. This, this is the Galois extension. This is, you know, exponential. This is the Galois extension. Right. Uh, another, another example. You know, and again, another group. Uh, and and here, here, the equations of the logarithmic, of the logarithmic equations are not very concrete. Because <coughs> these numbers, I don't know what they are. Because there are some numbers. Such that this is the Galois group. It's like this, this, this is the Galois group of this logarithmic equation from some alpha one and alpha two. Uh, <coughs> I just want to finish with the same question. So we still don't know if every strongly normal is the Galois, the Galois extension of a logarithmic equation, and we don't know conditions on the algebraic group to be the Galois group of a logarithmic equation. It's going to be the Galois group of a strongly normal extension, but how about being the Galois group of a logarithmic? I want to stop it. And uh, you assume that you fixed the ground field. Yes, 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 I fixed the game. Yes, yes. So by the way, by the way I should say that uh, this fact that every differential algebraic group is the color group of a strongly normal, I'm not fixing the field in that statement. <laughs> right? I'm not. So this is this is not the it's not the strong version of the inverse problem. It's kind of a baby version of the yes, <coughs> for linear equations. Which is, yeah, yeah, for linear equations is fine, but this, this yes, it is. But this is uh, if I have any differential algebraic the group, doesn't have to be linear, doesn't have to be over the constants, it's gonna be the, the color group for strong normal extension, but I'm not fixing the k. Yeah, uh, so I'm interested in bounding this differential type business. So um, these exceptional coordinates, are these, where this doesn't work as you would like to have it working. Yes. Are these the same coordinates appearing in the cartan kela theory? I don't know what those coordinates are. Okay. Yes. okay, perhaps I'll ask a different question. So there are points where it, uh, so there are points where this didn't work. You said this is where the set on the zero. Yeah, let's, let's make it uh, Are these exactly the non-regular points in the sense of Arnold? In the, sense of, in the sense of what? Arnold. Arnold. Okay, I'm sorry, I don't know Arnold. <laughs> okay. I feel bad now. I don't know what it is. Okay, but I mean, may, maybe you can tell me if it is. <laughs> you can tell me if it is. Um, so suppose you start with something like this, right? So next, right? And then th th there is going to be a whole open set. Okay? Yes. Where if I, if I take a generic point in here, so A, and then I witness him to this point I can find the delta. I can, I can find the delta yes. for this point. But it turns out this delta is gonna work for all of these things. Now, here I, I need to figure out if this delta is gonna work for uh, for for also this override. Now, this override it will be it will be contained inside the, 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 the you know the vanishing of the initials and separate. Yes. Right? So it, it might happen that you need more uh, derivatives there. Or is that the problem? Well, that is that, that is really what I don't we don't know right now. Now you could you could say okay maybe now I take a generic point in here. Right. Take a generic point here. Okay. B. Okay. Now this B has I'm gonna call this delta one and then start from delta two. Well, I can combine them to make it work. But then I run into the same problem that this is gonna work over some open set and then I don't know what's gonna happen. Here. So this is kind of. I think you might have a look at Arnold's book series. He's written several books about these topics. About these things? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, and yeah it's not in this language. It's yeah, written yeah. in this Cartan language of okay. potential forms. So okay. I think the problems are the same. Okay, so they're trying to reduce kind of the number of derivations that you yeah. have to use. So the, the question there is about a local normal forms of, okay. of solutions of the 
differential equations. Okay. And you are kind of uh, putting the derivatives in a normal form. Okay, yeah. And I guess these are the forms yeah, yeah, that yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, I know it. Yeah, Thanks. Oh, uh, thank you very much.